What is going on guys? This is Alex Danner from Hump Peak. Uh, today I'm going to be going through one of my favorite pieces of Sika gear, the Jetstream jacket. Um, I've been wearing it the past two seasons. I did a lot of deer hunting with it in the early season on the East Coast and then also took it to New Mexico on an elk hunt. But uh, I want to really do my best to give a real thorough review uh, because if you're like me, you want to know all the little details about the gear you buy before you buy it. And since Sitka can be a little bit pricey, I'm hoping to really give some honest feedback so you can uh, have everything you need to make that decision for yourself. But today I'm going to go through all the features of the jacket, all the specs, all the things I really liked about it, all the things Sitka could have done a little bit better, and just my overall review on the jacket. So here we go. All right, so one of the most important things, camouflage. So this jacket comes with two different uh, camo patterns. This one is the Subalpine, uh, which is a real popular camo pattern by Sitka. And it also comes in open country. But um, this pattern here has been really good for uh, deer hunting in the early season when the leaves are still on the trees. It blends in really well for that. Uh, it's also, I wore it for my New Mexico elk hunt and that was really great. It blended in perfect with that terrain. And uh, Sitka re recommends this jacket for any kind of active hunting. So. If you're doing any kind of hunting out west, spot and stalk, this is the jacket they created for that. Uh, also, solid colors. It comes in about five different. I know it comes in a gray, a tan, a black, and a blue. And all those are really nice if you want to buy this jacket so you're not just using it for hunting. It's a great jacket just to wear, you know, around to the store, anything like that. Uh, the jacket is definitely quality. So if you wanted it for more than hunting, you can definitely look at those options. So one of the most important things when I started buying Sitka's clothes is I, whenever I got the outer layers, something like this, an outer jacket, um, I typically want to go one size above what I normally do. So my standard size, for example, for their hoodies is a large uh, or any under layers, base layers, it's all large. But uh, for this kind of jacket, I get an XL in case I want to lay underneath. And just for a point of reference, I'm six foot and 180. So I generally like to have that flexibility. If I didn't have the size a little bit bigger, it'd be harder to you know, really pack layers underneath this. And then that kind of limits me when the season gets later on, when it gets colder, you know, you gotta really layer up. But um, it is an athletic fit. So in general, this jacket's a little bit bagger, like I said, because I got the size up. But um, if you were to get your standard size, it would really be snug. But having said that, this jacket fits me very well and it hasn't gotten in the way. Uh, I do bow hunt with this jacket and even when I go to full draw, I never got to worry about it rubbing on my arm, you know, when the string releases. So no worries there, but um, I would recommend going one size above just to make sure you can wear it, you know, all season long. So the weight of this jacket, it's about 25 ounces for a size large. Uh, this is an XL, so obviously it's going to be a little, a little bit heavier, but um, it's uh, it's not a big deal, the weight. I mean, it, it kind of seemed like it was a little bit on the heavier side, but all the hunts I took it on, it you know, it just wasn't a problem. So, even on that elk hunt when I was hiking, you know, obviously you get hot, you know, hiking up those tall mountains. But all I had to do take it off, bunch it up, throw it in my pack, and I was good to go. So, I would say unless you're really counting ounces on a doll sheep hunt or maybe a grizzly bear up in Alaska. And maybe, you know, there are lighter options out there, but for the vast majority of us that aren't doing those serious hunts, I think it's a very good weight and it won't hold you back at all. So the shell on this jacket, I really, really like because it is windproof. It's uh, got Gore-Tex and Finium uh, in it. So that's one of the new products from Gore-Tex that uh, Sika started using. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely quiet. I mean, it's it's not the quietest jacket out there, to be honest. Um, you know, it's not like one of the white tail jackets, like the Fanatic from Sitka, where it's almost like a Berber shell here. But um, I have worn it for bow hunting with deer, you know, deer right below me. And uh, it really hasn't been a problem. It hasn't spooked deer me, you know, rubbing around or anything like that. So the shell itself is very warm or it keeps the jack, it keeps you warm because that windproof there. So. For example, on that New Mexico hunt in the mornings, it was really, the wind was really, really bad. So you get to the top of the mountain, it's howling really hard. You know, we weren't even able to hunt because we were worried about our scent. 
but had this jacket on and being cold wasn't one of the issues that we had. Just that we didn't need to see any elk. But all in all, I was very, very happy with that and very warm too, so. All right, so the pockets on this bad boy. It's got these two main chest pockets here. And it's also got a third one right here. So it's really good for putting your phone in. That's where I usually put my phone in here. Uh, wind checker, all the things that I really want to be able to access very quickly. That's what I'll put in there. Um, also put a range finder in there. The pocket's plenty big for that. And then some. So that's that's uh, really nice to have. It's also got these two pockets here, which are you know just your standard pockets with zippers on them. But um, you know keeps you nice and warm if you're kind of huddled you know huddled during the cold. Uh, it will keep you warm and keep the wind off you. Um, it's also got a pocket on the sleeve, which to be honest, I've never really used and didn't really know it was there at first, but you know, it's one more place to have something very easily accessible. So I would say after figuring it out, it seemed like a wind checker would also be a good spot for that. And uh, that's probably what I'll use next time. And also a really nice thing are the armpit zips so if you're hiking and you know you don't want to take off your giant pack and you just want to dump some heat you can just unzip these bad boys and uh dump the heat and kind of keep going you know rather than taking the time to take off your pack take this jacket off stuff in the pack you know and then end up probably getting cold when you're done hiking so that's just a great little feature there too uh, also the hood on this is really nice and probably one of my favorite things on here so the hood is fully out right now, but if you want it to be fitted to your head, which I think you're going to want to, it'll actually tighten around your head. And then if you're sitting in the stand or just want to look off to your left or right, your peripheral vision isn't uh, blocked at all. So, you know, sitting in the stand, looking to your left or right, a lot of hoods will block that, but this one's great about that. You know, the hood moves with you if you tighten up on that strap. So I was very, very impressed with that. And every single time I put this hood up, I always tighten it. But the jacket could really be used for any hunt as long as the weight's right. Um, it is definitely heavy for really early season. You know, if this, obviously if it's 70 degrees out or something like that, you don't really want to wear it. But um, I'd say once it gets down to 50s, you know, that nice fall weather, it's a great jacket. You could really just put this jacket on by itself and then just add layers as you see fit all the way until it gets, you know, maybe 20 to 30 degrees. That's when I like to get a little bit heavier of a jacket. But, uh, you know, that's a very long range that you can wear this jacket, which is really nice. So, so that is the jacket. I went through all the different features of it, um, best times to use it, and uh, my personal experiences with it. But uh, I just wanted to add a little note about Sika's gear in general. Uh, it is definitely on the higher end of hunting gear. And, you know, a lot of people are kind of hesitant to, you know, spend that money on it. But me personally, I like to think of it as an investment because I'm going to be hunting the rest of my life. I've been hunting for the past 20 years. And over that 20 years, I've bought so much camo, like redhead gear, and uh, just throw it in the bin and never use it again. So me personally, I would rather just buy what I want, something I know that'll last and also was sick of having a good warranty policy. You know, you can call them up if there's a problem with the jacket and they'll hook you up. So I just wanted to add that little, little bit there because if you are gonna be hunting a lot every year and you know, that's your passion like it is mine, then it's something I would recommend and you just get what you want, it lasts and you're good to go. But um, if you're just getting into hunting, I, it's probably not the best care to buy unless you got some real deep pockets. Uh, just because, you know, you, you definitely want to make sure you like it, you like hunting, whatever you're hunting, um, before you invest in all this, all this really expensive gear, because as we all know, hunting is one of the most expensive sports. So it's best to kind of test the waters, see if you like it, and then kind of go up from there. But if you are a lifelong hunter, it's definitely something I would look into and I would highly recommend it. Well, that is all guys. Um, I hope you liked the review. I did my best to kind of go through everything with this jacket. And uh, if you did like it, um, please subscribe to the channel because I will be doing more gear reviews. I wanna keep pumping out content of the gear that I have and kind of go a little extra 
and providing my insights on the gear and really going through all the different features and just an overall analysis of all the gear that I do. So if that's something that interests you, like I said, please subscribe, like the video, and uh, if you have any questions for me, please comment on it. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.